It's now time for Off the Press on the Breakfast. Let's begin with the Punch newspaper. APC plants Buni Oyetola Bellows removal from caretaker team eyes interim exco. Party fears future implications of Supreme Court's judgment on Yobe government. APC member asks court to annul Congress's sack Buni led committee. No going back on Congress's, no apex court judgment bars us. That's according to the secretary. There's a picture here of a car wreck on the front page of the Punch newspaper, as well as a burning gate. And uh, the headline reads, protesting Futa students barricade highway, blame gate men for colleagues' death. Above the uh, headline on the Punch newspaper, November will test a papa tra truck call-up success. That's according to truckers. Carry appears before panel, mounts defense against hush puppies allegations. U.S. vaccine life lifeline, FG states workout sharing formula, Lagos gets priority. Federal government directs NSIA to source Mambela $200 million judgment debts for Chinese firm. Inamdi Kanu stable, needs advanced medical attention, that's according to his lawyer. NAPTIP, DSS, NSCDC, rescue 13 Libya-bound Nigerians, arrest suspected trafficker. Below the headlines on the punch, planned creation of 19 LCDAs follow as follows wide consultations. That's in Ikiti. Seven feared dead as Okada riders clash over levy in Ogun State. Buhari, Lawan, Tinubu, others mourn Abiodun's father. An escaped 14-year-old boy here saying that he saw a woman beheaded son where kidnappers kept him. Ogun berates a debut over alleged diversion of 600 of 64 billion naira local government allocation. And lastly, on the Punch newspaper, court hears Igboho's 5 billion naira suit against Malami DSS today. All right, and now moving on to the Nation newspapers. Big one there says Oshimbajo's team working on ways out of APC's legal uh, ditch. Why last minute's attempt to postpone ward congresses was stalled. Varsities to get 30 billion naira next week. Government and ASU meet. APC PDP reject Jagger's uh, call for third force. Uh, it's time for alternative. And also, lawyer says Igboho are waiting action on asylum application. Mackinde tips seven as commissioners. Also on the nation, resident doctor's strike takes toll on patients at hospitals and uh, stringent COVID-19 measures likely. Also an NPC to safeguard investment with conditions for IOC's divestment. Jamb, NUC, UBEC, others get acting CEO. And Kanu's firm, uh, Kanu is firm and stable in custody. That's the last one on the nation newspapers this morning. All right, so let's quickly turn to The Guardian. The headline reads, Fresh battles rage for soul of PDP APC ahead of 2020. New UAE flight rule on bans Nigerians, Indians for others. INEC bags MBA CJN to intervene in Anambra Guba cases. INEC begs NBA CJN to intervene in Anambra Guba cases. Poor. Not rich benefits from fuel subsidy. Economists counter FG. Records show how previous price hikes have worsened inflation and unemployment. Fuel subsidy removal endangers survival of million households. Also in the Guardian newspaper, Nigeria does not have enough COVID-19 isolation centers yet to learn, says resident doctors. Siasia takes case against FIFA ban to U.S. federal court. And uh, I believe those are the ones we're looking at on The Guardian. All right, let's see what, what we can find on the Daily Trust newspapers. Third wave, NYSC camps on red alert as 109 tests positive for COVID-19. Shot camps to check spread, experts urge federal government. NCDC records 851 cases in two days, 11 deaths in one day. Government may roll out lockdown measures soon. And NYC says uh, we're safeguarding members. Heavy rainfall. Kano residents lament as flood destroys property. Uncertainty as UAE lifts flights and uh, ban on Nigeria five months after. Also, wife pours hot water on husband over forced marriage. 
First crisis hits PDP as seven NWC members resign. Uh, we can also find on the Daily Trust this morning, APC chieftain asks uh, courts to nullify Congress's disband Buni committee. And Buhari deploys nine permanent secretaries. We can also find gastroenteritis kills 23 in Sokoto State. Those are the big ones on the Daily Trust newspapers. And just before we connect with our guest, uh, I think we can also quickly just play around with some of these um, uh, stories. Uh, of course, uh, the COVID-19, it seems, um, you know, as the numbers increase, it doesn't seem like, you know, and this is from what I've seen, it doesn't seem like a lot of people uh, as worried as they were in 2020. I remember when we first had, uh, you know, the N NCDC announced that we had 100 cases uh, in uh, 2020 and everyone was scared, you know, like 100 in Nigeria. You know, next thing we had up to 2,000 and more cases uh, daily. Uh, now we're seeing 851 uh, recorded cases and 11 deaths. And it, if you look around, you know, what, just ask around, it doesn't seem like a lot of people, see, you know, are bothered. Um, I'm not sure is, it's because of the vaccinated, because we barely have up to, you know, 5 million people vaccinated already. So I really don't know why. Uh, what do you think? Well, um, just like in several other parts of Africa, I believe that people feel that the COVID-19 seems to be, you know, just real enough. Take a walk around the city and you find just a handful of people wearing face masks. And those who do are simply to get entrance into buildings yeah. and you can definitely take it off when you're inside. So lots of questions to be asked. You know, I remember when there was a, a brief in here, um, the MPHCDA talking about the third wave of COVID-19 promises of COVID-19 vaccines to um, arrive in Nigeria by the end of August. Uh, that seemed to um, have given Nigerians hope, you know, in, in some sort of ways that, you know, when we're talking about these vaccines, it's something that everyone should be able to take. I've been trying to convince neighbors of mine to go ahead and take the vaccines, but you still see that vaccine hesitancy. You know, but you wonder really, is the government doing enough in terms of sensitizing people, you know, about the COVID-19 vaccines and just how effective it can be? But still there are misconceptions. Other people feel that once you're taking the vaccine, you're immune. But the facts show otherwise. It doesn't make you immune. You can still, at least that's what we've heard from WHO, that you can still contract the virus, just that the effect will not be as, you know, as terrible as it would have mm. if you had not been vaccinated. But um, about the story on, on Daily Trust, you know, that, um, you know, experts are urging the federal government to shut camp. I, I believe that that's the right move. If states like Lagos and, you know, organizations like uh, or institutions like Kinilag are going ahead to shut down, you know, the school just to safeguard people. I feel that nationally that's something we should be thinking of, you know, because if people get infected in the NYC camps, there's definitely a tendency that these case figures would rise. Oh. But I'm aware we have our guest now, public goes. affairs analyst, Ambrose Sigboke. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. All right. So we we're just uh, speaking about the um, COVID-19 cases in Nigeria. But I want us to focus on the stories that we've seen in recent days that seem to have begun with the APC World Congresses in some states, the violence there as well, and uh, what's happening with all the caretaker committees. The headline on the punch reads, APC plans Boni Oyotala Bellis removal from caretaker team. Um, we've seen also that... Um, it seems that the PDP has some internal squabbles as well with some PDP governors, or uh, I beg your pardon, PDP escorts and national leaders resigning, saying Secondos is pushing them out. So uh, what are your comments really regarding the APC, PDP, ruling an opposition party, and what seems to be an internal crisis in both of them? Well, uh, it is not new. Uh, we are used to uh, internal crises of political parties, especially when it uh, nears uh, election time, you know, 2023 is a, is a major election. Uh, we saw this happening, you know, in 2002, leading to 2003, the same thing in 2006, 2005, leading to 2007, and all those. So you say we are calling decimal in Nigerian politics. And it only goes to show that uh, our politics is not yet matured in terms of uh, the ideologies that drive why we seek public office in the first place. Uh, so this is the time, because of agitations and the rest, uh, more for pecuniary reasons, that is why we are having this inclusion. But the APC own is particularly very interesting. Um, this is the first time we are seeing this kind of scenario where a sitting chief executive of a state uh, and, uh, has become the 
national chairman of a party. I mean, it's just like uh, something from uh, the dreamland. You know, it's it's something unfathomable. It's something that uh, we didn't think that could happen. And how APC got itself into that, we don't know. But it was supposed to be a caretaker committee that was supposed to pilot the affairs of the party to midwife election of a new uh, central working committee, uh, the national, uh, national working committee for the APC. Uh, that has not happened for a very long time after the after of uh, uh, Mr. Adams Shumole. So why they have not been able to do that is very, very perplexing. And I remember that um, their own party member, who is a minister and a very, very, you know, prominent lawyer, uh, Mr. Festus Kayamu, did raise a very serious alarm just last week before uh, leading to the Congress, saying that on the heels of the uh, uh, you know, Supreme Court ruling uh, uh, about the election in own those states, that he strongly advised the party from a professional point of view that the party should not go ahead with those congresses under the leadership of the Chetera Committee, who is the sitting governor. But the party uh, went ahead, disregarded that warning, went ahead and had the congresses. Now, the outcomes of that will be very, very uh, grievous for the party because a lot of people are already going to court. A lot of misgivings are already taking place. And um, uh, if APC is not careful, uh, this will cause a very serious uh, crack in their party. Oh, well. All right. Um, still talking APC, and uh, but we're going to bring in the PDP now. The um, from INEC chairman Atahiro Jagai is in the news. Um, he has been in the news in, in the last couple of days, really, because of his statements asking Nigerians to reject both the APC and the PDP. Um, on the Nation this morning, it says uh, APC PDP reject Jagai's call for third force. Uh, so, so let's talk about that briefly. Do Do you think there is still that possibility of the growth of a third force? Um, in Nigeria's political conversation? Oh, I don't know what they mean by thought force, because this is the second time uh, they are talking about that, the thought force. This is actually the second time. Uh, we heard about the thought force in um, 2017, uh, 18, maybe to the 2019 election, where a, a group of people came together and called themselves the thought force. Um, I don't know what they are forcing, but uh, uh, I don't know what your guy is talking about actually because uh, the issue of the word i don't not comfortable with the word cut uh, force in a in a democratic uh, lexicon so i think first of all the nomenclature of whatever they're coming with whether it's using thought force as a metaphor or it's using thought force as a name um i think in a democratic sector we should remove anything that has to do with force even the nigerian police have removed force in their name and then some political people are coming to add force whatever they are doing so first of all that is a put off calling something the thought force but in, in as much as that i also agree that we need uh there's going to be political realignment i, I don't think jaga is saying anything new in the outcome of the um of all these congresses and uh, the outcome of the quest to acquire political power in 2023 there are going to be political alignments and realignments so if groups are going to emerge, just like what happened between 2013 and 2014, where uh, there was a coalition of um, different groups that, you know, you know, seamlessly merged into what we now call the APC. Remember the uh, CPC that time, bringing the power block. Remember the ACN, bringing the power block. Remember and then the people that called themselves the new PDP, break away from the PDP. Those were the strong uh, forces that came together to form uh, this uh, APC we have today. So, yeah. in you know, as we go closer to 2023, those kind of political realignments will always come to play, yeah. and that's what we are expecting. Do you, do you also always, see... The question is, yeah, is Saibu it Kate? in the interest of Nigerians, yeah. or is it in the interest of the political gladiators? All right, so, so now I want us to speak about realignments, you know, that seem to be happening also in the PDP. Uh, there seems to be crisis as seven members of the National Working Committee have resigned, um, it seems uh, it's coming off, you know, disagreements concerning the leadership, uh, Uche Secondus. Uh, how do you see this playing out? Uh, it's unfortunate because we are thinking that the PDP could play a credible opposition uh, in this uh, uh, present political dispensation. 
Uh, but uh, the PDP uh, has not been able to live up to a very, very strong opposition, just like what the APC did, you know, when they were in opposition. They were, you know, they were uh, a thorn in the flesh of the PDP when they were in the opposition. Now, the PDP was expected to play that role. But again, you can see what is happening. Uh, there, uh, a lot of intrigues, a lot of intra-political uh, uh, issues are happening in the PDP. So uh, it is for the interest of Nigeria that PDP gets itself right. Because if it doesn't, then we have, there's no opposition anymore. And if you don't have any opposition in a, in a democratic setting, then the ruling party will be left to do whatever it likes and get away with it. Okay, I want us to quickly turn to Namdi Kanu and uh, all the controversy regarding his arrest and detention uh, with the DSS. The headline on the punch reads, Namdi Kanu stable needs advanced medical attention. That's according to the lawyer. Um, remember what happened um, with the media trial, the, the coverage of, you know, the trial of Namdi Kanu, how the federal government wants to restrict that and... Uh, uh, all the questions that have been asked about this particular matter. Now, his lawyer spoke yesterday saying that they need um, advanced medical attention for this. But w with the way this is going, do you see any resemblance with um, 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 Elza Gzaki? Well, I, I think the federal government uh, in prosecuting uh, high target uh, cases like this uh, should, uh, it's, it's causing more harm to itself, uh, to its image, than good when it says it wants to restrict. Um, I saw the accreditation uh, where they were profiling media houses that would cover the event, accrediting them and the rest. Uh, this is not um, normal. I mean, if we have a, a, a case like a high profile case, is that allow the media to enter, control uh, the. the it's not, it doesn't mean that every you know, person that calls himself a journalist can have access. But at least we know the major dailies in the, in the country. We know the major broadcasting houses. We know the major online. Industry. You can work with the Nigerian Union you know, of Journalists. We can work with um, uh, with other, like the Bond Broadcasting Organization of Nigeria. You can work with all these unions that have in the media space to ensure that they have credible members covering uh, the, the event. Now, if you restrict uh, media, what you are trying to, the impression you are trying to create is that you have something to hide. So if, if that is the, what the federal government is trying to project, that means they are getting it, uh, they are getting the response. Because if you have nothing to hide in the trial, you make it open. And then you bring your case and then marshal it in court. And the media will always report what uh, transpires in the court. And then do some background check and uh, do some findings and report. So it's, uh, the people who, uh, the persons advising the federal government to do this is not doing the federal government any good. I think right. they should not open up what the trial. People should have access. The court is a public place. People should have access to the court, especially media people. And then they can report. They will have, if it's not even how journalists can enter, we have judiciary correspondents uh, in every major media house. There's a judiciary correspondent. So the senior correspondent should take over this uh, case, allow them to. But when you start restricting media, there, uh, there's the perception that some people may think, oh, it is people who are friendly with the government, the media houses that are friendly with them, that are allowed to cover the event. Therefore, they may slant the, uh, the reports to suit, to favor the government. We don't want to hear those kind of uh, outcomes. All right, Mr. Iboke, um, just in a few seconds before we wrap up, um, we see the story on the Daily Trust that um, the United Arab Emirates has finally lifted the suspension of flights from Nigeria, Nepal, India, and some other countries. Um, good news for us? Well, I, I don't know. At this stage, where uh, every country is getting worried about the uh, Delta variant of the COVID-19, uh, uh, these people are opening, this uh, country is opening up its uh, borders. Um, I think it's not something to be celebrated, it's something to be viewed with a pinch of salt. Uh, wh why is that happening? Have they, uh, have they assumed the level of health immunity? Have they vaccinated other people? When you, have, when you allow all countries to come and have a melting point and then come back, then um, what are you going to? What are the strategies put in place to prevent this virus from leaving this country and coming back to Nigeria or other places? And then when you say India, India right now is battling very hard. I mean, the, the thing is, the pandemic is hitting them so hard. So for a country where you open the borders to uh, uh, India to fly, 
and you also open the border for Nigeria. Nigeria should be circumspect about this and see how we can contain this virus before it consumes us. All right. I'm Rasik Boke. Thank you so much for your time this morning, for joining us on Off the Press. Uh, look forward to speaking with uh, you again. Thank you. All right. Um, stay with us. Uh, we'll go on a short break. And when we come back, we're going to be going back in history and telling you things that happened on this day a couple of years ago. Yes. Stay with us here on The Breakfast.